Hi, this is your math prof, Barbara Rademacher, and we're going to talk about slope. We're going to do four problems that all have the same instructions. Find the slope of the line. Is, uh, is the slope positive, negative, um, zero, or undefined? And what is the number of the slope if the slope exists? So let's do that. Here's the first line. And notice there are two points there. I made them a little larger because they'd just be easier to see. We're going to figure out what the slope of this line is as long as we know what two points are exactly. <clears throat> I'm going to drop a red line from this point right here. There it is. All right, that's called the rise. A vertical line coming down from a point is called the rise. I also brought a green line over from the point negative 2, negative 4. This is called the run. And where the, where the run, <clears throat> run meets the rise, notice that you have a triangle with the run on the bottom, the rise making one of the legs of the right triangle, and then the line itself between the two points forms the hypotenuse of the right triangle. Well, don't worry, we're not going to use the Pythagorean theorem. Instead, what we're going to do is just measure. Okay, the rise is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units long. And the run is going to be six units long. One, two, three, four, five, six. The slope is the ratio of the rise to the run. In other words, it's a fraction, rise over run. So if our rise is eight units and our run is six units, all we have to reduce is reduce this fraction. You can put it in your calculator and do math frac. Um, and what you find out is 4 thirds. The slope of your line is 4 thirds. Not 4 thirds x, just 4 thirds. Slope is always a pure number. And we know that the slope is positive 4 thirds because this line rises from left to right. It goes up from left to right. Another way of looking at it is this line tilts over to the right. Now, here we have another line and we're supposed to find the slope. All right, here's the rise. The rise is one unit. Well, here are the two points, okay? And we make a triangle between those two points. This side is the rise. This side is the run. And since slope is rise over run, we know that the number part of rise over run is going to be 1 over 5. Ah, but why is it negative? Because this line falls from left to right. Another way of looking at it is that this line tilts to the left. There are different ways of looking at the same thing. Uh, your math book, however, says that this line uh, goes down from left to right. And that's how you know that this line will have a negative sign in front of the number that represents the slope. Now here's a horizontal line and we're still being asked to find the slope. Well, notice there is no rise. There's no triangle, but there is a run there is a flat surface, and that surface is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 units long. But there is no rise, so we'll put in 0 for the rise and 7 for the run. And if you were to put that in your calculator, you would find out that 0 divided by 7 is 0. 
the slope of all horizontal lines, all flat lines, is zero. All right, now we have a vertical line. This line is all rise and no run. There's no triangle. It's all rise, and that rise is 11 units long. So we use our equation, slope equals rise over run equals 11 over zero. But this is very bad. Um, this is so bad, it's undefined in our number system and just about every number system. The idea of having a zero on the bottom of a fraction is undefined. We don't even have any words for it. So we would say that the slope of a vertical line is undefined. Also, you will sometimes see that the, uh, uh, the slope of a vertical line referred to as no slope. The line has no slope because if the slope is undefined uh, if, and you don't have any words for it, well, of course, it, there won't be a slope to speak of. Hi, this is your math prof, Barbara Rademacher, and we're going to talk about slope this time from the equations of lines. Notice your first problem here has the equation y equals negative 3x plus 3. This line is in what we call slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. m is the slope of the line. The number in front of x is the slope of the line. The number at the end is the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. All right, so we're being asked, what is the slope of this line? And I'll tell you right now, it's the number in front of x which is negative 3, right there. So m is negative 3. Whenever you have a line in y equals form, you have it in slope-intercept form. The number in front of the x will be the slope of the line, and the number at the end will be the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. Remember, the y-intercept is a point. Here's our next equation. Find the slope, if it exists, of the line 5x minus 3y equals 6. 5x minus 3y equals 6 is in a form that we call standard form. The formula for standard form is ax plus by equals c. If you want to easily know what the slope is, you have to solve for y and put this in slope-intercept form. It's also important to know that you cannot graph this on your graphing calculator. You have to have your point in y equals form, the slope-intercept form. So let's do it. Let's subtract the 5x term from both sides of the line. Minus 5x, minus 5x. So that, and don't forget your negative 3, we'll have negative 3y equals 6 minus 5x. Only this isn't really correct slope equals form, is it? because the x term has to come first. So let's say this is negative 3y equals negative 5x plus 6. Always bring the sign in front of the number with it. Now this has a plus in front of it because it's not negative, it's positive. Now, I'm going to divide through, to get y by itself, I'm going to divide through by negative 3, by negative 3, by negative 3. 
These negative threes will cancel, leaving me with a y. Negative 5 over negative 3 is positive 5 thirds, 5 thirds x. Positive 6 over negative 3 is negative 2. So our slope of this line is positive 5 thirds. m equals 5 thirds. Okay, this next line is one of the unusual lines. y equals 8. You can write this, oops, there we go. You can write this in slope-intercept form if you're sneaky. This is really y equals 0x, that's what happened to the x term, plus 8. 0 times x is 0, so it's as though you added 0 to 8, which is just going to be 8. But here, look at what the number is in front of the x. The slope is 0. Notice we always use the letter m. That's actually something that we do in the United States and other countries. They call it different things. Your graphing calculator actually calls it a. So don't get hung up on m, but m is what we call it in the United States the slope of this line is zero, and if you were to graph this line, you would find out it's a horizontal line. Okay. Our last line is x equals negative seven. Now, if you try to graph that in your graphing calculator, you'll find out you can't do it unless you have a special add-in or a special plug-in, a special app, okay? Um, you can't graph this under normal circumstances because it's got an x equals. There is no y that's visible in this equation. So what are we going to do? Well, this is a vertical line. If you can't graph it, it's a vertical line. And vertical lines have an undefined slope. That's not very vertical, is it? Pretend this is vertical x equals negative 7 is a vertical line if I were to draw a set of axes, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7. Here's negative 7. This equation is a vertical line, or the, the equation of a vertical line. This is the graph of the equation, x equals negative 7. Through x equals negative 7. Notice there is no y-intercept and the slope is undefined. So we would say the slope is undefined or we would say no slope. You'll see both possibilities. So let's just say m is undefined. You wouldn't even say equals. It's undefined. Okay, that's it. Talk to you later.